Uh, welcome to another episode of Beers and Bells. So DeMarco here and uh, the other guys had to sit out. They were busy today with uh, family obligations. So you just got to deal with me today. So sorry about that, guys. <laughs> so I uh, want to thank you guys so much for being here. Very excited to introduce a very special guest today. Um, somebody that I just happened to stumble upon online. Um, you guys, a filmmaker, documentary maker. I actually watched his movie a couple nights ago, and I'm very excited to talk about that with him. Um, and have you guys see this today. So I want to remind you guys of the 1,000 subscriber challenge that we're currently running. Once our channel reaches 1,000 subs, we're going to select five winners um, to win the following. It's going to be five free personal training sessions. So they're going to be one hour long each and in person or virtual, depending on where you live in. It's going to be a three month customized program um, accessible via smartphone app to go with that. And then also a strength with purpose shirt, which I'm actually not wearing today. I'm rocking the uh, Bear Moose Brewing uh, like uh, they're out of Everett, Mass. So good stuff. And uh, what I am drinking today is the Diamond Lake. It is a double IPA from Remnant Brewery um, out of Somerville. It's in Union Square, and it is uh, very good. So I'm excited. So, Dave, welcome to the show, man. How you doing? Thanks, Marco. Thanks for having me. I'm doing well. Happy New Year to you, and Happy New Year to all your your listeners uh, and your and your Happy partners. Happy New Year, brother. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I uh, appreciate you having me, and and. Uh, yeah, we did stumble upon each other, but uh, happy to be here and, and look forward to talking to you today. Yeah, definitely, man. So, uh, what are you uh, what are you drinking today, man? Yeah, so um, I just wanted to take a minute uh, to to share with uh, you guys being in Massachusetts. You may have heard the news that uh, David Witham, the uh, founder and owner of Proclamation Ale Company, um, tragically passed away on Christmas Day. Uh, from uh, a battle, a battle with cancer. Um, Dave is in our movie. Uh, he's really the the comedic relief in the movie, and uh, he became yeah. a really, really dear friend of ours. And uh, I had become particularly close with Dave over the past six months or so. Um, and uh, and so, you know, obviously the whole craft beer world is really shaken up by this loss. Um, and so today I'm featuring. Uh, this is actually my last proclamation in my refrigerator. This is Abstract Wizardry. Uh, it is a oatmeal double IPA. Uh, it's probably going to tank oh. me at, at one o'clock in the afternoon, but um, but this Sounds is from Proclamation. <laughs> yeah. So Abstract Wizardly, uh, Wizardry is uh, is a double IPA from Proclamation Ale Company uh, out of Warwick, Rhode Island. Originally, actually, they were right down the street from where I live now in West Kingston, Rhode Island, but they, they expanded back in 2017. So um, for everyone out there, uh, this is cheers to Dave. Um, he's missed and we will never forget him. So cheers, brother. Absolutely. Cheers to you, man. Yeah, I can't remember who I was talking to, Dave, but I I think it was actually at a brewery. I think I was uh, it was right before the, the second shutdown. Um, and I, I was talking to somebody that knew somebody that actually knew him and uh, was had been to the brewery, loved it, said it was great. And uh, they were talking about talking about him passing. So um, what's, uh, not, not to be too insensitive, but what's sure. the, um, it, was it, was he a co-owner? Was he, would he have family and friends involved or was he a sole yeah. proprietor? Yeah. So Dave, uh, he had a couple of business partners, but he was the majority owner. He's the founder, um, yeah. CEO and president of Proclamation. Uh, he owns it with his mm -hmm. wife, Lori, who was involved. I think Lori does most of the marketing. Um, okay. And, yeah. uh, and so there, you know, it was a team effort, but, uh, but really, I mean, the beer, was Dave's vision, you know, from the time that he was a home brewer some years ago, um, you know, he yeah. started off as a music teacher um, and then, and then just decided that he's going to, going to start a brewery. And, uh, you know, I've been telling everyone that I've been doing these podcasts with um, that, you know, Proclamation is probably a top two brewery in the state, you know, arguably it's Tilted Barn and Proclamation one, two uh, in any particular okay. order. And so, you know, um, their their footprint is all over the place obviously in massachusetts and you know greater new england and yeah. all of that and uh and so people certainly will know of proc and have probably tried it before and he, he's just i you know i kind of lost for words because it's just you, you just don't expect that uh you know he's a young guy and um you know we'll we'll miss him uh, everything about him and uh and so but yeah we can keep his memory alive and and fortunately he was in our movie and and um you know he was just yeah he was awesome so he well, he was a, he was a great addition too. I thought he had really good insight, and uh, I just him as well as the other cast members. The uh, I I loved all the stories about how they started and yeah. and uh, and just just really it's just really cool. And I thought yeah. that was really neat. So I will definitely uh, when we get to Phase Four in Massachusetts and uh, Rhode Island, man, we're gonna we'll definitely road trip out there. 
and uh, go go drink some beer there and go check it out. So go yeah, see I that, highly um, recommend. Yeah, I highly recommend yeah. it. And the same thing too. You know, talking to some of the guys that I've met in Massachusetts, like you know, I don't think I've been to Massachusetts since at least March. You know, maybe even longer than that. And uh, I'm dying to to, oh, to yeah. get up to some of those breweries that you guys have up there. So. Yeah. Oh, it's, I mean, it's a great scene here. And honestly, uh, that's what I was so excited about um, with your film, Dave, is I, I, funny enough, I had just had the, um, are you thirsty? Yep. Um, IPA out of, is it revival? Revival. Yes, Brewery, revival. That's, yep, yeah. that's correct. Yep. I, I had just had that. I, I, I drank it for a, for an episode of our show probably about a week ago. Nice. And then on, um, I just happened to, again, I found you, found your page, and I and I saw that you guys were on Amazon Prime, so I was like, well, this is easy. Mm-hmm. And then uh, when they were on there and uh, somebody was drinking the, the RE Thirst, I was like, man, that's, that's cool. I just had that beer. So um, it was really cool. I had no idea that the craft beer scene had blown up as much as it had in Rhode Island. I'm not surprised, mm-hmm. but um, uh, it's it's cool to know that, it's, uh, that there's a big scene there, obviously, just like Mass. Yeah, and it's crazy. Like so even since the movie released on uh, on Amazon and some of the other platforms back in July, um, the scene is is just gone crazy. I mean, even with the pandemic, there's been a number of breweries that have opened, and you know, people yeah. are like, "Oh, you know, why didn't you get this brewery in here? Why didn't you get that brewery in there?" And it's like, well, some of you actually didn't exist at the time, and you know, we tried right, to do the right. best, best that we could. But yeah, the Rhode Island scene is blowing up, and you know, obviously in Massachusetts, it's huge as well, and. You know, my, my hope is that these breweries can survive the pandemic because I think once this thing yeah. is over and the vaccines roll out, you know, people are, are dying to just go somewhere. And so these, these places will flourish once again. Yeah. Oh, they're going to blow up, man. I, I think, uh, I, I think when I just got chills thinking about it, actually, just being able to like, go actually go do, do things again. Right. Um, hopefully with the timeline that the, that the CDC and everybody's planning, hopefully the like, you know, late spring going into summer, Yep. Uh, that'll be kind of the time, which will be great because that's our best time of the year for weather here in New England. So right. I, I think it's going to be insane, man. I think uh, a lot of money is going to get spent on food and drink. <laughs> yep. I think you're absolutely that's right. Sure. It's, uh, yeah, yeah, it's been it's been a tough year, you know, and uh, for a lot of folks. And um, you know, actually, we uh, uh, my whole family, my wife and, and two children, and I both actually just got over COVID uh, about a month ago. Um, and so, uh, so that was yeah. uh, not not great. Luckily, we we didn't have too bad of symptoms. But it's that's this good. has just been the most insane year uh, that that's ever existed. So, anyway. <laughs> oh, I no, I agree with you, man. I agree with you. And that's honestly this. Uh, so this this show that we uh, that we started, um, my coworkers and I, we this was an idea I had probably a year prior to the mm-hmm. pandemic. And then when the pandemic happened, I you know just like a lot of other people, I was unemployed. I had mm-hmm. nothing but free time. And I was like, well, let me actually do this thing. So nice. um, it's been really, the one positive has been able to meet really cool people like sure. you and make really cool, uh, you know, connections and stuff like that. So, Congratulations, um, by the way, yeah. on, on the cast. Yeah, thank you, man. Yeah, I appreciate that. Um, and I, uh, uh, to kind of bring it back to you. So the, the film, it's The Craft, Rhode Island is Correct. the name of the yep. film from what I remember. Yep. yep. Came out in, uh, came out last year or well, now two years ago, 2019, right? Right, that's correct. Yep. Yeah, we made our awesome. debut. The world premiere was at the um, the 2019 Rhode Island International Film uh, Festival, which uh, was in August yeah, of 2019. That. So, um, and then and then, like I said, the the movie uh, made its uh, I guess TV debut, if you will, uh, on demand debut in, in July of 2020. So, yeah, that's awesome. I'm I'm sure that really uh, that really blew things up for you. I'm sure you had a lot of lot of um, a lot of people obviously see it when it was accessible on streaming platforms. Yeah, yeah, it's been, uh, you know, you're getting messages, you know, from people in Arizona and California and, and, and all over that's the awesome. country, really. And, and that's a cool thing to see. As you know, you're, you're into the craft beer scene and, um, you know, you're from Mass, I'm from Rhode Island, you know, we love our own local scenes, but uh, I'm dying to find out stuff about, you know, other states as well. And I think that's the beauty of oh, kind of this, this genre, you know, of film is that, um, uh, or this scene is that people want to explore all the, all the states and what, what each brewery has to offer. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. No, I, I couldn't agree more. And honestly, you know, I, um, you know, a lot of people, when they hear the title, just like beers and bells, you're like fitness and beer, they don't really go together, do they? And, I say, and, and my thing is, I think they do um, for a couple of reasons. Um, the big reason for me is, is all about, you know, have a, have a balanced lifestyle, right? Like mm-hmm. train your body, you know, work hard, feed your mind, read stuff, learn, 
Um, but enjoy the burger, enjoy the beer, you know, have, have a good balance and, and live your life. I'm, I'm not training to be next Mr. Olympia. So um, <laughs> I don't need to be like, you know, 2% body fat or whatever. Um, right. But then the second piece of that, the second piece of that that I love about, um, especially the craft beer scene is, uh, is the community. You know, it's a really mm -hmm. cool community. It's really, you meet some really interesting people um, at, at breweries, particularly, you know, um, again, my favorite, we're, we're, we're New Englanders, so we love the summertime when it's nice out yep. and you can sit outside and actually enjoy the weather. <laughs> right, right. Um, but it's cool. You know, you, you can make really cool connections and it's just a neat, um, it's, a, it's a neat uh, mix of people. So yeah. I definitely think the community, community aspect is definitely my favorite. So yeah, totally, totally agree with that. Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, man. So what was your, I know, obviously in the documentary, it, um, you spoke, you know, you went into each different kind of brewery and I, I gotta say, I really loved the format. I thought it was really easy to watch and it Thank wasn't, you. you know, it was really good. It wasn't overwhelming. I liked, I really liked the history stuff. I'm, I'm a little bit of a history nerd. So mm -hmm. I loved the Narragansett history when you went into, um, you know, what they did and how they got mm -hmm. the patents and how they were, sure. they were getting the, the prescriptions for the pregnant women. And then the, <laughs> the, the Quint, uh, the Quint uh, Jaws connection sure. was really cool. Yeah. Um, I love movies. I'm a huge movie nerd. So I was, I was super into that. I actually paused the movie right when they said that part. And I went to that scene where they're in the boat. I wanted to see if he was actually drinking an Aragans. And I was like, damn, he wasn't drinking one. That would have been perfect marketing. If he was drinking it while he was telling the story. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's um, no, it, it was pretty crazy. And uh, you know, we thinking back on it, you know, we started filming it in, in 2017. Uh, we went to foolproof mm -hmm. brewing company in Pawtucket they were the first brewery that, uh, that agreed to be in it. Um, uh, the owner, Nick Garrison there, he's a friend of mine. And, uh, and then it just kind of took off from there. And, uh, you know, I've said this before that we, we had to get Narragansett in there, you know, they're, they're on a hundred and well, I guess 2020 was 130 years actually. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. 1890. I was thinking if it was 1890 or 1891, I think it was 1890. So 130 years. And, um, you know, I think the movie would have been okay if, if we hadn't had Gansett in there, but how can you not have like one of the oldest breweries in the country, no, you, you know, especially if it's I in think Rhode that was Island very needed. in the movie. Yeah. And, um, you know, as you, as you talked about Captain Quint and, um, you know, Dr. Seuss and, and the Red Sox and all of that. And, uh, yeah, and it's yeah. just, it, so, so they were, you know, and, and they're like, a, I think they're a top 30 uh, largest craft brewery in the country now. And so, you know, they're pretty, a pretty big deal, but those guys were, were super cool and gave us a ton of access. We went back there, you know, probably four or five times to do different things that we needed to do. And, um, and, and so those guys have also become great friends of ours. And uh, what I'm also looking forward to is in February or March, I think is the timeline, they're all actually opening up a new brewery on the waterfront in Providence. And so, you know, once oh, again, awesome. yeah, once the vaccinations roll out and, you know, everyone can go out safely again, uh, that's definitely one of the stops that we're going to make is now the new Narragansett brewery. So, um, but you know, the, the whole, the whole scene, we were able to, to catch it at the time where it was really evolving uh, pretty rapidly, like I said earlier, you know, with a bunch of new breweries and all of that. And so, um, you know, and then the pandemic hit and everything just kind of stopped. But I think it's an interesting <laughs> period. Of yeah, it, you know, I think we timed it where, where it was, uh, you know, an interesting period of time. So now people that haven't been able to get out can go back and, and sort of look at what, what it once was and, uh, and think about what the beer scene will, will be once again, once we're all able to you know, experience it once again in person. And so, uh, you know, we're very pleased with it. We have some other uh, things that we would like to, to look at, potentially your state, by the way, um, you know, if, if things awesome. work out correctly. So that's um, great, man. You know, so, so we'll see what happens as, as, uh, as we get some numbers on, on the craft Rhode Island and, and see what, uh, what type of financing might be out there for us for a second one. Oh, sure, man. Yeah, that, that, that was going to be one of my questions was, was, is there, is there something like that in existence for Mass? And, and is that something you would do? Because that's uh, um, obviously living in Massachusetts, I would, I would um, be even more excited about a film about the scene there, especially since I've, I've been to a few here. So sure. Well, let me, really put, cool. let me put you on the spot now, actually, and ask you if, uh, give me a top three Massachusetts uh, brewery scene um, uh, to, to target if we were to go and do Massachusetts. What, what three would okay. you choose? So I've got a man. I hope I hope all of our brewery guests aren't watching this because I feel like some <laughs> people are gonna love this, some people are gonna hate this. But and and this is again combining quality of beer, but also that community aspect. Mm -hmm. uh, man, I'm gonna have to put Bentwater Brewery at number one. I'm gonna say okay. Bentwater. They're out of Lynn, Massachusetts. Uh, they have the sluice juice. I don't know if you've ever had it before. It's a pretty popular. 
um, pr pretty popular New England IPA. It's oh, so good. It's you could, <laughs> it's like it's like water, man. You could drink it all day. It's delicious. Nice. But, um, so Bent Water, they were they 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 have a great uh, they have great beers, really really good beers. They're also just really cool people. We got to mm -hmm. we actually sat down with their uh, sales director, uh, Mr. Ryan Nestor, and they were just cool, man. We sat down and they they uh, they we did a tasting together. It was one of our first episodes when we didn't know what the hell we were doing, mm -hmm. and uh, and they the, the entire table was filled with with uh, with with you know cold beer cans, mm -hmm. and uh, I think we tasted three or four, nice. and then he just looked at us and he said, "You guys want some shirts?" And we're like, "Yeah, we'll take some shirts." So he gave us each a shirt. And he nice. said, uh, well, I don't, he said, I, I'm too lazy to put this beer back in the fridge. So why don't you just take it home with you? Sweet. Um, and I, and I, I was looking at him like, uh, okay. My wife was not thrilled about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they um, usually are. But they but... were, yeah, but they were, they were just really cool people. And, uh, we just, we, we definitely formed a, a cool connection with them. Definitely awesome. love what they're doing. So, um, I say I bet water has got to be my number one, okay. my number two, man. I got to go bone up brewery. Um, okay. They're based out of their Everett, Massachusetts. Um, okay. They've been around for about four years. I think they opened up in, or well now working on at least like, or maybe three or four years. Yeah. Um, they're out of Everett mass and they've got a lot of bunch of great menus, a uh, bunch of great beers on the menu. They also let us uh, come on um, let the, they, they were featured on our show mm -hmm. and um, they, uh, they just have this really cool, like tap rooms, really fun. They got a pinball machine in there. And then they also have, uh, this really cool outdoor beer garden area for when the weather's really nice. Nice. And uh, there's great place, man. They're super cool folks. And um, any any place I can take my dog to go drink a beer is like sure. that's, that's always going to be a plus. Nice. Um, so that's I would awesome. say I would say Bone Up would be number two, and then number three is it's uh, it's Remnant, man. This is uh, <laughs> I I love these guys so much. They were our very first brewery guest, and um, they have great beer. They're really nice people. They have a really cool outdoor patio area. And I am, I love this, this Diamond Lake's really good, this double IPA, um, but I'm absolutely in love with their clip art uh, IPA. It's awesome. Cool. <laughs> awesome. So that'd be my top three maps. So I, nice. they're all really cool. I, I would not be surprised if, if, uh, um, if they were, if they were, if they were interested in being on it. So. Cool. That's awesome. Yeah. I'm, I'm uh, you know, I know a little bit about the mass scene, um, but not, you know, not as much as the Rhode Island scene, obviously, but I didn't know a lot about the Rhode Island sure. scene before we started doing it either. And so those guys might be targets of ours. Um, and, uh, you know, and, and then obviously the the big guys like Sam and Harpoon, um, you know, similar to Narragansett, we probably want to get some history in there if we were to do it. So, yeah. uh, so we'll see what happens. And, you know, I don't, I literally don't think we can even travel into Massachusetts right now, but. Um, no, you yeah, know, there's a travel ban. Yeah. So we're, uh, you know, we're looking at, um, you know, I have been, doing some research on the mass scene and uh, and we'll see where the, where that leads ultimately so uh the good news now is that you know we have distribution we have an agent and so uh you know unlike rhode island we didn't know if this would ever get on tv but you know having one under our belts you know if we were to do a second one it probably would end up also getting on amazon and some of those other platforms so so uh yeah. you know hopefully hopefully we can make it happen we'll see yeah, that's really cool, man. It's really exciting. I, uh, I, I saw that. So um, this was your first craft beer uh, film that you made. Have you have you done any other films prior? Or is this kind of your first major your face first major project in this uh, in this industry? Yeah, that's a great question. It's the first major project in this industry. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, the way we started, so, you know, you were talking about your love for history uh, a few minutes ago. I'm actually a, his a high school history teacher and government teacher in Rhode Island oh, awesome. in Providence. And uh, I've been doing that for 16 years now. And, um, you know, my background is in politics and I have my master's degree in political science. And so so my company actually uh, is owned by myself and my two siblings and my brother-in-law. So the four of us. And um, we really, just because of my background in politics, we started doing a lot of like political campaign work and things like that. Um, and we were working on some other projects back in 2017. And, um, and that we were approached uh, by an organization to, that was looking for some content um, to come up with something. And, and I had known that the scene was kind of blowing up, but I, like I said earlier, I didn't know much about the Rhode Island craft beer scene. So I actually yeah. pitched the idea of doing a documentary on the Rhode Island craft beer scene. And that's kind of how this whole thing started. Um, but, but to answer the question, we, we didn't have any experience in, in craft beer and, uh, and we hadn't yet made a feature movie of any sort, although my my siblings um, had worked in, in some uh, local movie stuff, uh, you know, 
for, for several years. And so they had the, the technical expertise and things like that. So, um, oh, that's good. yeah, so, so is, uh, you know, it's, it's weird. You think about all the steps that, uh, that you go through, um, not knowing if you'll finish the movie and, and all that stuff. And it's just kind of remarkable to think back now, uh, the fact that we were even able to complete the movie, let alone, you know, the fact that, you know, hopefully thousands of people have seen it at this point and, you know, we may yeah. do another one, but it's, you know, it's a good lesson on, on just kind of pursuing the things that you enjoy doing and, and seeing where it leads. But, uh, and now look at us. Now I'll call myself an expert on the craft beer scene, at least locally, uh, <laughs> to, to try to push forward to, to get a new movie made. So uh, we'll see what happens. Oh, of course. <laughs> hey, man, Although, no, whatever, half, whatever it takes, man. Half kidding about that, of course. It's, uh, you know, a lot of yeah. doing this, uh, uh, you know, just like really learning anything mm -hmm. is, uh, and then teaching it, is that you're, you're doing it to sort of learn it yourself and then you're sharing it with other mm -hmm. people. And so, you know, part of the doing the movie was me just kind of learning because I was interested in it. And hopefully we've been mm -hmm. able to educate, you know, some other folks about at least the Rhode Island scene. And like I said, maybe some other states down the road. That's awesome, man. Yeah. And, and uh, truthfully, Dave, that's uh, that's pretty much what I do as a personal trainer. I right. uh, go to a certification. I work with coaches. I learn some stuff and then mm -hmm. I take said stuff and teach it to my clients. So uh, right. it's more or less the same the same concept it's just different uh, material sure. so definitely the Absolutely. same focus and and it's funny like how you mentioned like that's kind of a half truth but like obviously from a marketing standpoint like yes i'm a craft beer rhode island craft, craft beer expert we should right. definitely have a film in mass <laughs> yep. yeah that's marketing exactly. you got to definitely boast a little bit so <laughs> that's how you got to pitch it you know and uh so uh, we'll see although i just blew my cover now so but uh, but hopefully it'll yeah. it'll work so no, you'll, I'm sure you'll be fine, man. So um, obviously you guys did the film and then you mm -hmm. did some of the political stuff. So what, what is your company? What's your company and, and what all do you guys do? Yeah, so uh, my company is called 11 Design. Uh, it reads awesome. on my screen backwards, but it's, uh, it's like the number 11, but spelled out. Um, nice. and, uh, and so that's our, that's our company. We're a media marketing company um, based out of Providence. And like I said, you know, we do a lot of political campaign stuff. We've We've worked on some bond initiatives. We've, you know, worked. Uh, actually, we've worked at pretty much every level of government, from federal to to municipal. Um, and uh, and like I said, that was kind of where where we where we first started. But um, you know, we we've since you know uh, ventured out and, and did other stuff. You know, as the pandemic's gone on, we've done um, you know live streaming stuff for organizations and and all sorts of stuff like that. You know, I think probably my interest. Uh, just because I'm a craft beer geek now, I, I guess you could say is uh, I want to continue to pursue this. But you know, 20, uh, we just had the 2020 election, so we had some political work then, and uh, and then yeah. 2022 is the is the real important election in Rhode Island. That's when you have the governor's race and you know all the yeah. other statewide races. And so you know that stuff will probably be gearing up um, within the next half year or so. You know, probably by yeah, June, absolutely. people they'll start yeah. declaring that stuff. So I'm sure we'll get some of that stuff and. Um, you know, like I said, it's still a part-time gig for me because my full-time job is as a teacher. Um, but, uh, you know, my, my partners uh, have shifted to doing it full-time. And so, like I said before, we'll kind of see where it leads us. And, um, you know, I think, I think we're able to undertake pretty much anything at this point, um, you know, and, and so we'll see what, what accounts we pick up and uh, what services we can provide to people. So, uh, but personally, I just enjoy the craft beer stuff the most. So, um, you know, hopefully we can continue, continue that stuff. That's awesome, man. Yeah, I think that's uh, I think that's really cool with the uh, the company you guys have. You, as you're as you just described, you you guys are involved in politics and you're involved in making films about mm -hmm. about craft beer. There's a lot of a lot of different avenues that you can take with that, which is really cool. You know, you're not you're not sequestering yourself or putting yourself into a box and uh, you know and limiting what your what your potential is. So that's yeah, that's really exactly cool. right. And and as as you know, you know the um, part of part of our movie, you know, talks about the legislation in Rhode Island that's very limited yep. as far as what the breweries can do. And um, you know, I've already talked to Dave Fields from Wormtown, um, you know, over the phone when I was kind of starting to do some research on Mass, and he was sharing with me what some of the laws are in Massachusetts. Like if you were to go to you know, Treehouse or Trillium or really any of the breweries, like you can basically take a U-Haul truck, you know, if, if they have enough beer, you can buy it all if you really want to. And, and that's yep. not even possible in Rhode Island. You can literally only take one case per brewery. Um, and so- I laughed when I saw that, by the way, when I, when they started going into the, out, the, the volume limits and all that, yes. like they originally, when it was like, what, 72 ounces, I, yeah, 72 I laughed ounces. and said, a six pack, really? Yeah. Well, come on, yeah. man. <laughs> yeah. Damn, it, dude. Think about that, that, you know, that's a... <laughs> yeah. Think about how restrictive that is on the breweries. You know, and obviously the laws have changed since then, but it's still only a case 
And, you know, you look at Massachusetts, New Hampshire, oh, Vermont, it's, uh, you know, you can, you can go there and you can, I mean, granted, it's going to be expensive, but you can buy as much as you want. And, but that's also sure. helped to market, you know, the Massachusetts scene and the Vermont scene and all of that. Uh, whereas Rhode Island is still, you know, still trying to find its way a little bit, I think. Yeah. I don't know. I guess in, in one positive way, that kind of gives, um, that gives kind of Rhode Island kind of that fight club kind of mm -hmm. uh, grassroots feel as far as the, the craft beer scene. It's sure. interesting to see how the legislation's <laughs> changed though. And yes. how, um, you know, how, how it's become more accessible for uh, people to just kind of start, you know, kitchen brewing, home brewing yeah. at home and then kind of go from there. That's I, I honestly I kept I kept hearing that story over and over again. And it was a combination of hearing that story, fantasizing about having my own beer and then <laughs> thinking about all those episodes of Breaking Bad that I watched and just thinking, damn, I right. want to brew my own beer, man. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, the, the barrier to entry is pretty is is pretty low now. So that's good. You know, you can homebrew, get your homebrew kits. And that's how obviously a lot of these folks started across the country. Um, and, you know, in Rhode Island, I mean, I'm sure it's the case in Massachusetts too, but in Rhode Island, you know, we have some smaller upstart brewery uh, types that, you know, Providence Brewing Company which is in our movie, I think their space was only like, I don't know, six or 700 square feet. Now they're actually moving. Yeah. I don't I don't know where they're moving to yet, but same thing with Tilted Barn. They just opened up their new brewery, which is massive, but um, their original space yeah. was also only 600 square feet. And so, you know, if you make killer beer and you have a little bit of marketing background, um, you know, and you can get people to come to your spot and then, and then kind of see what happens. And that's, you know, that's what happened with Proclamation. That's what happened with Tilted Barn. A lot of these places have expanded and and kind of moved on to, to larger spots. And I'm sure the same, again, can be said for uh, for Massachusetts as well. In fact, I think Treehouse, didn't Treehouse start off pretty small and now they're just like mammoth. Oh, yeah. like, so I, I don't think oh, that absolutely. was their original facility. Yeah. And again, I'm sure others as well, but um, it's, it's, it it's like, cool. Yeah, somebody, well, it's funny. I, I was talking to some uh, some friends of mine who who watched the show mm -hmm. and uh, they were we were they were drinking a Treehouse beer and they said, man, you guys should have Treehouse on the show. And I said, yeah, that would be really awesome, wouldn't it? And then he looked at me and said, good luck. And I said, yeah, I said, are they that, are they that big? And I think he, he, he all but told me they're basically like the unicorn. <laughs> that, yeah, that's, that is, uh, that's exactly the terminology that people use. I actually did reach out to them as well. Um, and same thing, people were like, yeah, good luck with them. They're going to say no. And, uh, and what I will, they did say no, by the way, but what I will say is that they got right back to me and there was a miscommunication at first where they thought we were um, a music band and they're like, oh no, you know, there's a huge waiting list. And I was like, no, we're actually a film oh, crew. Yeah. We're, we're looking to do, you know, a movie. And they got right back to me again. They were like, oh, that's so cool. Like, thank you. But we kind of want to keep it in house, you know, uh, which I totally respect. And, um, you know, but I, I, I give those guys a lot of credit because they could have just blown us off and just not gotten back to us considering oh, how large sure. they are, but they, they got right back to us. And um, I haven't yet been able to get up there to, to actually, you know, stand in the lines and, and grab their beer, but um, I'm sure at some point I will. Um, but I, I have nothing bad to say about those guys because they got back to us, you know, right away and I'm sure they're super busy. And um, so that oh, was sure. kind of cool, you know? So. That's always great when you see that, when you see people that are, that are, that are that, that have gotten to that level Mm -hmm. and um they're still being responsive they're still you know talking to to us average right. shows right. um de definitely speaks speaks to their obviously their brand and and who they are you know when it comes down to it so that's really cool yeah absolutely they uh that's great and uh you know like i said we've uh we'll, we'll see we'll see where the rest of it goes but um uh you know time will tell <laughs> so. yeah well the good thing is there's, there's no shortage of breweries in massachusetts so you're you're gonna have plenty to choose from <laughs> and um if 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 a, a rando like me can show up with a with, with a camera and interview some of these cats for a YouTube series, I'm sure you'll be able to get some traction for a film. Yeah, hopefully, <laughs> Once the time goes. hopefully yeah. we can. I'm sure you guys do a, do a great job with uh, with your YouTube channel as well, though. Uh, but yeah, but it really is. It's you know, it's about the different relationships too. You know, doing these podcasts and mm -hmm. um, and, and shows over the past few months. Um, you know, the, the people that I've met, they've, they've put me in touch with folks that they know. And, you know, you just mentioned some of the breweries that, uh, that you've worked with before. And that's kind of how this works. You talked about community earlier. Um, and, mm -hmm. and the same thing goes for us. You know, now I have a bunch of friends in the craft beer community. And when folks are looking to get in touch, I'm able to put them in touch with these people. And, um, and that, that's what makes it cool. And that's what I miss the most, I think, uh, is, like you said, just going and hanging out with these guys and, and gals, for that matter. Um, and yeah, and just, like, yeah. just like, you know sharing those experiences with people is, is probably, I think what we all miss the most. 
Oh, definitely, man. I I, I would say hundred percent. Uh, unless you're just really, really, really introverted. Um, right. Which it, which which case this may have been the best year of your life if you're really introverted. <laughs> um, but if you're if you're even mildly social, obviously like we are, you're obviously craving that 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 right. human interaction, of course. So yeah, um, yeah, definitely understand that. So not to not to get too much into too many details. Obviously, yeah. I'm sure there's a lot of stuff you can't talk about, but. What is what's the future? What what does the future look like for you as far as your vision for yourself and your company? It's called Eleven Eleven. Yeah, Design. yeah, uh, yeah. We're Eleven Design LLC. Yep. Um, yeah, that's a great question. Uh, I, um, you know, the fact that we have the infrastructure set up now with the agent, you know, our representation and distribution company and stuff like that. You know, yeah. if I had my pick, uh, I would love to see the craft turn into a series. Um, you know, where we. You know, maybe yeah. go state to state or something like that and, and uh, you know, do do a television show. Um, I think that, that would be wonderful. I think there's a lot of interest in that. Um, I think that it could be done well, um, but, you know, yeah. a lot of things have to have to fall into place for something like that to exist. There could be some other stuff that happens with it, too. Um, and yeah. so that's what I would like to see. But, you know, I think you know, I'm just, as a, as a history teacher, I'm interested in storytelling in general. And, you know, anyone that makes a documentary, I think that's, that's the case. And so I think there's other stories that could be told as well, you know, outside of the craft beer scene. Um, I'm just thinking off the top of my head, like, you know, food trucks or people that, you know, live a vegan lifestyle or, um, you know, uh, there, there's actually a restaurant down the street from us called Matunic Oyster Bar. And um, he has, you know, he started off with, as a, basically an oyster fisherman. And now he has like a multi-million dollar restaurant that, that, um, you know, everyone probably in the region comes to visit. And he also has gone to like Africa and uh, East Asia to, to teach about aquaculture and stuff like that. And so, you know, those oh, are wow. just a few, yeah, they're just a few examples of, of things that could be done. Um, I was just watching actually, you'll appreciate this. Uh, I was just watching the other night, the, the documentary Icarus that came out in 2017 about the Russian doping yeah. stuff, won the Absolutely, best documentary yeah. uh, at the Oscars in, uh, and so, like I said, you know, there's just, I'm interested in sort of like, you know, learning new stuff and, and telling those stories. And so, you know, I'd love to do more beer stuff, but, but if there's other stories that, that need to be told, then that would be cool to do those also. So. Yeah, I think that's awesome, man. I think, I think, again, I, I know I mentioned this earlier, but I think that's a great mindset of you, you know what you're into, but you're also mm -hmm. open to learning some new stuff and, and sharing. And obviously as a filmmaker, um, you know, it's, you don't want to again. You don't want to put yourself into one box. You want to definitely have uh, have different avenues. So sure, that's sure. Uh, that's cool, man. No, that's that's really really neat. I uh, I honestly didn't know. Um, I learned a lot today. I didn't. I knew obviously about your film, um, mm -hmm. but I didn't know that you guys were like a media company and marketing yeah. and did a bunch of other stuff. So that's um, that's really really cool, man. Where um, where can people find you? So if people are interested in like reaching out, obviously they can find the film on Amazon Prime, yeah. but where can they find you? Where can they potentially reach out to you for your services and where yep. can they watch the film? Sure, yeah. So um, once again, our company is called Eleven Design LLC, um, media marketing company. Our film, The Craft of Rhode Island, is available actually on a lot of platforms across the country, but we've been pretty much just talking about Amazon Prime. Um, it's also on Tubi, yeah. uh, T-U-B-I. Uh, I think nice. Tubi is also free, um, but you know, pretty much everyone has Amazon Prime. So the Craft Rhode Island on Amazon Prime, um, and then you know, uh, people can can follow us on Instagram at that Craft Beer Movie. Um, people can check out our website at 11ri.com. Um, they can look me up, Dave Ritchie or David L. Ritchie. Uh, you know, you can reach out to me uh, as well. And so, so there's a lot of ways that folks can get get a hold of us. Um, you know, and again, we're, we're, we're interested in, in learning, you know, about a lot of different stuff. And so people, if people have ideas, they can reach out to us and I'm always open to new ideas. Um, so, so yeah, that's the thing. The, the thing we're trying to boost the most right now is our Instagram following again at that craft beer movie. That's kind of where a lot yeah. of, um, a lot of the craft beer stuff, you know, whether we move forward with the second movie or not, um, that's where most of that news will be broken. So, um, so that's where I would encourage people to, to check us out. And that's actually to Marco where I found you, right? By following you and, yeah. um, and that's how we met. So. Yeah, I know. It's funny. It's funny how, um, you know, I, it, it, the, the big joke is like, you know, sliding into the DMS, uh, quote unquote, like I honestly, some of our guests, uh, like you, obviously you included, like some of our, uh, coolest guests that we've had on were from that very reason. Like I just, I saw a page, I mm -hmm. saw a post or something and it interested me. And then I just reached out and said, Hey, I love what you're doing. 
um, you know, let's get together and be on the show. So I think now, even with the pandemic, especially, it's a little more acceptable um, to just kind of, you know, but I, I think at the end of the day, again, we're craving that interaction. So I yeah. think people want to, you know, they want to connect. So. Yeah, I think that's exactly, and that's the same thing that's happened with, uh, you know, I've almost like, you know, invited myself onto some of these podcasts and, um, you know, but people have been, like you said, people have been responsive and, you know, they don't tell you to F off. They're like, hey, no problem. And uh, so, you know, I was on a Connecticut podcast, a New York podcast. Uh, I was on one in California, actually, this guy, Eddie. Awesome. Um, yeah, so it was really cool. And, and uh, I think for the most part, people don't get creeped out about that stuff. You know, people are just trying to connect, like you said, and uh, find some interaction and we share common interests as well. You know, I'm interested in yeah. hearing what you, what you guys do. You're interested in hearing what we do. And, um, you know, that's how, that's, that's basically how people you know, make friends, you know, it's no different than, than seeing someone at a brewery and just talking to them, you know, it's just exactly. digital basically. So, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm happy to connect with people as much as possible. No, that's awesome, man. Yeah. And I, I think that's, that's what it, that's, it's truly what it comes down to is like you said, making connections, um, you know, building, cultivating an awesome community and doing mm -hmm. all that, which I, again, I know I've said this a million times, but I think you really captured that in the film Thank um, you. when you saw people just hanging out. Yeah, you're welcome. I thought the really cool, candid um, comments that you got from just the customers at the mm -hmm. breweries were really cool. They were just talking about why they like to go. Right. They had like the young, the young, newly married couple. And then you had the older couple. Like it was just cool. It was just a cool mixed, mixed group of folks. And um, they were there, they were there, drink some really good beer, hang out, relax and, and just have a good time, you know? And it's so funny to see it like now, because it's like, oh my God, you're not wearing a mask and you're right. standing within six feet. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, what I, are you doing? <laughs> it, it is crazy. And, and that, you know, the, the, one of the last scenes in the movie, um, it was the five year anniversary of proclamation and, uh, yep. and it was just like completely packed, you know, and, and like sardines in there. Yeah. And, <laughs> You know, my, my, yeah, my yeah. sister, like my sister and I, you know, like I said, my sister's a, a business partner of ours and she's like, I just can't wait until we can go back and, and not have to worry about like any of that stuff and just oh, be packed in I once know. again. And, you know, as weird as that sounds, because, it, you know, everyone's so germaphobic now, it's like th this yeah. whole year has been just sort of like a complete, you know, mind bleeping <laughs> and, and uh, I just want to go back to normal so badly, you know, so hopefully we can. No, man, I'm with you 100. percent I I definitely, you know, obviously out of necessity, the Zoom, uh, Zoom is a great avenue mm -hmm. in which to meet you guys and and do these episodes. But my my favorite, of course, is in person, like at the brewery, Absolutely. at the place of business, doing the tasting, you know, getting a feel for the place and and uh, and doing all that. And at the end of the day, the great thing about what you do, Dave, is you just with that film, you, what was it, seven breweries that were on there? How many were on there? Uh, many yeah, we got, um, I call it 10. So uh, it was really nine, yeah. but Shades On, uh, we, we saw them at Ocean State Beer Fest. And uh, and so we got yeah. Chip Stamps and the owner there just in it for a split second. So we'll call it 10 for the sake of it. But um, yeah, awesome. now, there's, now there's over 30. So, you know, two thirds of the of the breweries, we were unable to get into the film, um, which That's is amazing. all the more, yeah. yeah, it's all the more reason for people to come down and and check out uh, those others as well. Um, and I think there's what, like 200 breweries in Massachusetts or something like that? Yeah, or, there's or a there bunch. I think it's, I think it's, I think it just reached like 250, I think is the Oh my God, yeah. yeah. If I, if, 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 according to the last speaker that I saw, it's uh, it's booming, it's, it's a yeah, booming yeah. Uh, industry. Unbelievable. So there's one actually, yeah. yeah, there's a new one opening up uh, actually really close to me in, in summer, but it's Union Square, it's Portico Brewing. Okay. Um, yep. They just, they did the, you ever heard of uh, mainvest.com? Yes, I have. Yep. Yeah. So they were on there and they, they did the crowdsource um, investing. And I, the last, last thing I checked, they hit their number awesome. and they, uh, they, they hit their goal and everything. So they, they had their startup uh, cost and everything. So I guess they're going to open soon. I don't know. I had, I need oh, to cool. check on that. So, but they're opening, actually, there's a Brockton, I, Brockton yeah. brewery opening up. So. Yeah, I actually spoke with the guys at Brockton, um, and uh, they oh, were awesome. telling me a little. Yeah, they were telling me a little bit about their story, and then I think I saw the Portico story maybe on like Mass Beer Bros or something like that. Maybe they had a story about yeah. it. I'm not sure. So mm -hmm. um, that's really cool. And and uh, you know, again, some of those breweries are small and really local, and and then you have some of the larger ones, obviously. Uh, same as in Rhode Island too. But it's the cool thing is that you know, no matter where you go, it is a different experience. And so that makes you want to, yeah. you know, just cut, go and try them all really. Um, so I can't wait until this thing's over so I can get up there and, and, and uh, see what Massachusetts has to offer as well. 
Oh, 100%, man. And, and one thing, one idea that I kind of floated um, with a few of our guests is mm -hmm. um, kind of combining the two one of these days. I feel like we should definitely meet up, do a follow-up episode, and mm -hmm. you teach us about beer, and then we can teach you about, like, kettlebells and fitness. So we can kind of have, not, not at the exact same moment, obviously, <laughs> that they both wouldn't mix in the very same moment, but definitely maybe work out and then drink after, so. <laughs> oh, I was telling my wife uh, right before I hopped on, I was like, damn, I was I was going to not drink a beer today, and then DeMarco was like, hey, we're going to crack one open, and she's like, oh, you can start tomorrow, so. Um, you know, I, I actually, <laughs> I, I played hockey all through into, into college. I went to the University of Rhode Island. I was a hockey player. And so I've worked wow. out for, you know, basically my whole from the time I was a teenager till basically like four years ago. Now we have two little mm -hmm. kids and I like have not worked out in, in probably three and a half years now. And so I'm just like, yeah, dying to get back into shape, but I just can't seem to find time or a path to do it. And, uh, and so that's yeah. not really an excuse. You'll probably tell me to, to get over it and just get back into shape. But uh, <laughs> you know, maybe you can teach me something at some point too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> try to, absolutely. Try to find man. that motivation. Yeah, and obviously no pressure at all, but you can, at any time you can reach out to us for, for any kind of guidance, obviously. I appreciate um, that. that actually, funny enough, of course, man. Yeah, that um, one thing I will say though, is if, if you, as far as like with the pandemic and mm -hmm. um a lot of gyms are closed. It's really hard to actually go to the gym and work out now, obviously. Um, right. Like, honestly, if you just get a couple dumbbells or a, a kettlebell or like a couple like pieces of equipment like that, you'd mm -hmm. be surprised how much you can actually get done with like, oh, one sure, or two yeah. pieces of equipment. So yeah, definitely Absolutely. like a minimalist approach. Yeah, I actually so. just got a jump rope the other day. So I'm, we have a treadmill and I have a jump rope and I got to get some some uh, dumbbells or something like that. But it just, like, yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure that if I started, you know, within a couple of months, I'd start feeling like somewhat normalized. Um, yeah. But it's just like, as you probably well know, it's just getting started. That's the toughest part, you know, so. It is. Yeah. No, it, it is, man. And it's uh, getting started the hardest part. And then the best part is, is once you start to, you start to build that habit, you start to get a little bit of progress. Then you start to, you start to get real, then you get hooked. Right. And then there's right. that kind of, that, 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 uh, that self-feeding loop, right. That's really, yeah. that obviously helps you and you just kind of keep going. So. Right. Um, but you'll get there, man. It's, it's honestly, <laughs> you know, it's honestly challenging. I'm actually gonna, I'm actually gonna lean on you for some advice. Um, you know, you have, so you have two children. Yes. Yes, we do. Yeah. That's we got awesome, a, man. Our, yeah, so, our son, our son's going to be four in uh, about two weeks and uh, our daughter is about two and a half. So. Yeah. That's awesome, man. Well, congrats, Thank brother. You. My, uh, so my wife, my wife is currently 35 weeks pregnant. Oh, congratulations. And, uh, yeah, thank you, thank you. So I, I have a I have a baby girl on the way. Nice. Um, should be about the end of January um, mm -hmm. if things go as planned, which we'll see. <laughs> so <laughs> right. one thing, one thing I wanted to ask you is, uh, this is kind of a selfish question for myself. What what would be your kind of number one, um, like tip for a new you know soon like father to be? <laughs> yeah, that's a great great question. Um, I think I think the most important thing is to to be present and be there. Um, you know, I tell my students this too. Like, you know, before you have a child, you can't imagine what what it's like, what goes into it, like all of that stuff. And you know, first of all, I can't believe that there's not more maternity or paternity leave given in this country because I can't imagine. Yeah. Like my, my school was, you know, gave me basically as much time as I needed, but like a lot of, a lot of organizations don't give much time to people, um, to be with their children. Yeah. And it's really hard. It's a, it's a life-changing and very difficult thing. It's really rewarding, but it's certainly difficult. And so, um, I think the most important thing is to be there for your wife and, and make sure that you're, you know, pulling your weight and, and doing the things that you need to do to make her life easier. And, um, you know, she, my, my wife tells me, she's like, you're their father. Like you're not, you know, th that old adage that, uh, you know, you're, oh, I have to babysit my kid. It's like, no, that's your kid. <laughs> like, you're not babysitting your right. kid. That is your child. And so I think for dad, sometimes, you know, we, we don't think about um, the fact that like, we need to be as, you know, invested in this as, as, uh, as the wife or the mom. And, and, uh, and so do that, make sure that you're, you're always there um, and, and uh, available. So uh, I, fortunately, I, you know, my wife, um, held me to account. And so, you know, I've been with my, <laughs> I've been with my kids a lot, obviously teaching from home since March, basically. Yeah, um, but, uh, you know, a lot of, a lot of parents don't get that opportunity. So, um, you know, cherish it while you can, uh, cause it, it goes by quick too. You know, the fact that my son's almost four now, um, is pretty crazy. 
So I know that was a mouthful, but um, but just be be a good dad, be there for for them. So. Yeah. No, thank you, man. That that definitely wasn't a mouthful. I, I was uh, <laughs> I was definitely taking mental notes and and definitely into that. I've um you know it's as you said I I don't know what it's like to be a dad. I've never been one, so this is this is going to be a first time, obviously experience. So. Yeah. Um, but hey, that's more that we, that's more that we will very soon have in common. Um, Absolutely. In about a month, yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. Just keep just keep working out. Don't do what I did and you know just drop the ball. So I'm sure I'm sure you'll continue to to stay in shape. Yeah. That is well, it, it helps that that's my career though, and that that's part. Right. You know, that's one thing that helps, obviously. True. Very true. Yeah. It's because uh, yeah, it's definitely difficult to find time. You know, uh, to and then when you when you do have time, you're just exhausted. So um so so yeah. continue to work out and, and it'll be good awesome well good deal man well i appreciate that advice uh, i Absolutely. think it's ob obviously great yeah great actionable um great actionable advice and tips um dave is there anything else that you want to say um to our viewers about like what you're doing or anything you want them to know no i just want to reiterate you know once more um you know we're still in the pandemic so if people aren't and we're heading into a pretty dark winter so um, you know, the movie is free. Uh, we're trying to get as many eyeballs on it as possible. We're trying to you yeah. know, educate people on the scene and, um, you know, all the more reason to, to, you know, come out when you're able to and spend money in Rhode Island or in Massachusetts or whatever. So you know, the craft Rhode Big Island time. is, yeah, the craft Rhode Island is available on Amazon prime and Tubi for free. Um, and, uh, you know, I hope people enjoy it. I hope we did, did the Rhode Island craft beer scene some justice and, you know, again, please keep Dave, Dave with him, uh, and everyone's thoughts as well. Um, uh, he's, yeah, absolutely. uh, you know, he's a, he's a craft beer icon. Um, and so he's going to be deeply missed. Yeah, man. No, I think that's a great, a great note to kind of close out on. One thing I'm going to say, man, is that I'm not a, I, I'm a movie nerd. I like to watch movies. I really enjoy them. I don't know much about the inner workings of like filmmaking, that kind of stuff. Like I like know a thing or two here and there, but one thing I will say is that it, it definitely felt like a professionally done film. I thought Appreciate the camera that. work and yeah, no, I really mean that, man. I, um, I thought the, cause I've, I've watched a lot of documentaries. I actually love documentaries mm -hmm. and I've seen some that were really, really well done. And then mm -hmm. some, you know, not so much. Mm -hmm. um, th I thought, I thought this one had a good combination of like being well done. I thought the, 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 like, you know, li little things that people don't think about until you start making videos, obviously sure. like you make films, I make YouTube videos. You start thinking about lighting, audio, yeah. You start thinking about the camera angles and everything. Um, I think just objectively, it was it was a, it was a really fun film to watch. So I appreciate I that. that. Really Thanks. Well done. Yeah, and I'll, I'll leave you with uh, with one funny thing. I was just th thinking about Dave once again. They um, in the uh, the scene where he where we're at Ocean State Beer Fest and he did like that thirteen percent stout. Um, we actually yeah. th that, we actually had to redo that scene um, because they were playing uh, of Monsters and Men in the background at the Ocean State Beer Fest. Mm -hmm. and we couldn't get the rights to that song. So we actually had to um, ADR his voice. We had to basically send him the lines and he had to redo the voice. And the song that's actually playing in the background was written and recorded by Dave Witham. So we actually took out the Monsters and Men song, put Dave's song in oh, there awesome. and had him redo his voice. And so there's a couple of things like that. So if anyone's making movies, we learned the hard way, like make sure people don't have logos on that you don't have the rights to like Red Sox logos and Patriots logos, and then yeah. make sure that you have the rights to all the songs. And so. We actually also in the original part of the movie had um, actual Jaws footage, but um, but they needed they wanted like ten thousand dollars for us to use like eight seconds of the movie, and so we just cut it. Um, so yeah, for eight yep. seconds. Eight, yeah, Damn. Yep. absolutely. So so there are little things like that that you have to wow. you know think about you know granting getting rights and, and things like that. So you know we'll know for next time, but you know if you didn't know um, that about our movie, you wouldn't you wouldn't know it. So you know I think I yeah. think that's. Uh, a testament to, 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 uh, to Nick, who was our editor, um, you know, piecing that all together. So, but yeah, we didn't want to spend $50,000 to, to make not $50,000 on the movie, you know? Oh, no kidding, man. Yeah. That's, that's incredible. <laughs> Obviously that's uh, that's really interesting though. I feel like that's, that's always what's cool to learn is, um, how something's made, right? Like we're talking about the breweries and how they started from like this little home brew, yep. you know, set in a kitchen to building Narragansett and all these big, right. uh, you know, these, these big breweries and, um, you know, like Treehouse, for instance, these like what we yeah. call the mammoths. Um, right. I, I love little things like that where you go into like the little, little things that you had to, that you had to learn along the way. Right. Um, that's crazy. Eight seconds of footage for 10 grand. Man, that oh, is, yeah. that's yeah. no joke. That's no joke yeah. for a movie that's 45 years old. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's so true. Yeah. But I, I, you know, 
I guess Steven Spielberg doesn't mess around, you know, with his rights. And so it's, uh, yeah. it's pretty crazy, but you know, lesson learned. And uh, it's, it's even a teachable moment for my, my students, you know, it's like, Hey, you know, going through sourcing and stuff like that and citations, you have to make sure that you mm -hmm. give credit where credit's due and you have to make sure you get rights when you, when you need to get the rights. Otherwise you can't use people's stuff. So I mean, we knew that, but we didn't really know as much detail as we needed to know until, right, right. until we uh, really went into it. So, um, yeah. yeah. So, that's, so basically if you were to try to put like Star Wars in your movie, then it would probably be like double the price is what I'm hearing. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And, um, and then Lucas even, and Disney would come after you. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And there, there's even other restrictions too. Like that probably, if we put stuff like that, for example, into the movie, it probably would never even like get on Amazon prime because those companies wouldn't touch it because we, we wouldn't have the rights granted. So it's, uh, yeah. you know, we could probably put it in there if we were just going to like show it to our friends, but, um, you know, if you're going to go and actually, you know, do it commercially, uh, there's no chance in hell. So, yeah, makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Well, hey, it's good to know. And obviously, you'll be uh, even more prepared for the next time, you know, the yep. next one that you do. So you guys will Absolutely. you guys will have that knowledge and everything. So, uh, well, Dave, I want to thank you so much for being on here, man. I definitely enjoyed um, getting to know you, learn about the film project and what awesome stuff you guys have um, for the future. And uh, thank you so much for being on, man. Yeah, DeMarco, I had fun and, um, you know, let's stay in touch. And, and maybe when uh, when the pandemic's over, we can uh, uh, we can meet up at a brewery and grab some beers. Oh, absolutely. I would love that. We'll definitely get together. And like I said, we'll we'll have some fun. We'll meet up meet up at a brewery that has like an outdoor patio. I'll bring sure. a couple of kettlebells and we'll, we'll teach, you, <laughs> teach you the ways of the kettlebell. You can teach us about craft beer and we can just have a fun, um, have a fun time. So sounds great. And I wish you all the best with uh, with your child and uh, hopefully everything goes goes well with you. Yeah, thank you so much, man. I really appreciate that. Um, I'm going to bring it back to you guys, the viewers, and leave you with this empowering mission um, going into 2021. Train your body, feed your mind.